Hello S10 fans, uh, this is my 1996 Chevy S10 big block 454 conversion. This is part two. Um, it's been a while since I made the last video, so I'll get right into what uh, what I've done so far. Um, as you can see in that, I haven't did anything in that as far as the wall, um, as far as the brakes, the steering column, I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, I've been basically working on getting this big block and that in there with uh, the Camaro uh, headers that I have on there. And uh, so just to kind of get up the speed and that what has happened, um, I found in that one, I had to move these. So instead of using the regular brackets that you get for your S10 of moving it backwards and forwards, um, I had to add on to here to move the engine further forward I did that on both sides these are going to be solid motor mounts um, on it and it will have just a, um, a solid uh, grade A steel bolt that will go through both of them uh, the mounts that are on the S10 or my 454 that's what it looks like on both sides and uh, get you a net uh, I mean there's a lot of people in that say well you know I like to have the rubber mounts net in there to eliminate all the road vibration the engine vibration and that and I'm not too worried about it um, uh, I'm not too worried about as far as the vibration and that I can I can hack it it's no biggie to me um, since the last video I've replaced put these control arms I don't know if I mentioned it in the other video um, I just want to make sure in that that I ain't uh, that I haven't overlooked anything from the last video so I replaced both of these on both sides which these I got through Speedway Motors and um, there's two different sizes to get so you want the 8.5 uh, two of those and that and you flip them from one side to the other but they work great um, these brackets here, I built these myself. These are all welded in. Everything has been all welded in on the back side and everything. Been pretty well smoothed out. Uh, I did it on this one here. Uh, where it originally had a plate here in the original. I have taken it completely out. And it's welded all in. Fully boxed in. On all the way down through. I got it boxed in on here so that way it's all filled in strengthens it back up um, I have noticed net here and that that uh, I did not put a weld in here so I will go and put a bead of weld across here make sure that is well filled in um, other than that let's see um, what we'll do is that is I will go down underneath and show you what it looks like from underneath the rig. So down from underneath, there's the driver's side, all filled in. I got it fully filled in, welded on the top, the bottom. Got it fully filled, welded in on this side, so it's well reinforced. Um, welded the bottom the best that I could. Kind of harden that uh, the weld from down below with a MIG, but it should be good enough. It's well reinforced. Like I said, besides uh, that needing to be welded up there on top, which I will get to. But right now it's it's ready and yet to clean it up a little bit and throw some paint on and start uh, installing the engine. But um, I will. Pause this and that, put the engine, set it back in here, bolt it up exactly the way it will be. So that way uh, you can see that I actually was able to get it in here, that there was plenty of clearance, there wasn't no issues. So uh, I will get this engine and that in here real quick and uh, start this video back up. Okay, and we're back. Got the engine in there. 
So to show you now that everything is all hooked in, it's all bolted in. Got plenty of clearance down through the header for the upper control arm. There is plenty of leeway on the back of the floorboard that had to be cut. There's none of it touching from, as you can see in the inside, there's plenty enough room to plate this all up, up this way. On this side, mount it in. Plenty of room for the headers back in there. As you look down through, plenty of room, not touching. Plenty of room all the way around. Upper control arms. Now what we'll do is we'll go down underneath. Here's what it looks like underneath. This is passenger side here. Here's your driver's side. Now get you in that that there is going to be issues on your pipe here because it's really in line with your uh, lower A arm. So you have to make sure that this exhaust either comes this way or down and under. Or try to bring it up through this hole here where the torque converter is. Now, this is a 400 turbo. Um, so this is where it sets right now. And... Uh, so my next step in that will be is getting the cross member in here and seeing where the mounts will be for the transmission and uh, work on it from there. But it is sitting in there. And as you can see, there is plenty of room, probably more than what needed to be. But at least it's cut out enough in that if I want to go to a bigger quart pan on it, I can. There is more than enough room to do so. So uh, it gives you enough leeway in that for any expectations down the road or any other modifying that you want to do. But like I said, she is sitting in there by herself. No cherry picker. Uh, I have to say, Nath, that it was a lot of work to get into this part. A lot of trial and errors and trying to figure how I was going to build a, a mount for it. Um, just a lot of trial and errors. I wanted to make sure I come across something that actually really worked before I started this video. Um, through a lot of the videos, Nat, the shaft here, I got to look for about a 96 Jeep Cherokee that has universal joints on both ends. And in hopes that with it will give me a little bit of leeway as it goes up. We, I'm not really too sure. Um, I may have to move this over. We'll see between it and the brake booster. Um, but the main part is getting this engine set in here. Uh, my next step in that is uh, the transmission uh, piece, which I will do, like I said in that, uh, when I started these videos, is that I will do a video of every one, uh, of everything that I do to this truck. Um, as you can see in that, if you look from uh, part two to this part three, uh, I didn't really, I didn't leave off. Um, if anything in that, uh, I just... Uh, I didn't elaborate into, you know, these mounts and that, but like I said, and that to any other one, uh, I had cardboard uh, makes, you know, for it, what I was going to do. And originally I was going to make this one here and this one here. And I come across these and that in a month of my stuff. So I go, oh, I'll try that. And needless to say, it worked great. 
so it allows me to use these plates along with that now some would say now well i don't know and now that that's enough uh strength you know for a big block 454 now get you um i've seen guys in that that has had other mounts oh i can't find it oh there it is if there is um one guy nat that i talked to or i watch his videos he had one like this one here that he had on his s10 it was producing seven to eight hundred horses and it literally buckled this metal so this is pretty thin stuff here i mean that is uh I gotta say, Nat, that's uh, that's pretty, pretty thin stuff, in that When you are looking at it, when a nickel is thicker than that mount. So, way I figure is, uh, if I'm going with some good solid steel mounts like these here. It's going to hold it um, more than enough. Uh, down underneath, give you an idea. You know, you can see that there's plenty of room underneath their belly. No way of rubbing a scrape in the net if the engine's moving whatsoever, which it shouldn't with solid mounts. But like I said, some people don't like solid mounts, don't like the vibrations. Uh, that's your expectations of which way you want to do it. Uh, for me, I don't really care. Uh, but, um, like I said, Annette, um, when I got these these headers, these were Camaro headers that are supposed to work for uh, S10 Big Block. And you will find ones that will work and ones that won't work. And uh, I could have probably got by with trying to find some other headers, go uh, out through the body type fender headers or something like that. But they're, uh, they cost too much. And really on here, the only thing I had to really modify on it is, um, is really having to move this engine a little bit further forward. It's not much, but it's enough. And uh, the mounts that I had on it um, just would not give me that leeway. You don't have to notch it to put your fuel pump in if you want to go with manual fuel pump. There's more than enough room here. So you got no issues in that with that. Um, like I said, there is plenty of room down below, up above. And what I did is I would set this engine in, that in here. And when I set it in here, I would I have these already pre-made. I'd set them in here, tack weld it. Go along with a flashlight, double check, make sure that I was getting plenty of room back in there in between. Making sure that I have pan room and uh, making sure now that you're getting plenty of header room down along the sides. You know, I want to make sure that I have more than enough room, even though it shouldn't move. But, you know, a little bit more extra room and now I feel a little bit better. There is no touching back here in the back. Everything is, is perfect. Um, there is no rubbing in the back. Uh, really close up here on the, this uh, heater box and stuff. But it's not that bad. Um, I was more concerned of down there. It makes it look like it's really close. But it... it, it it, it really did work out great. So, um, but just to kind of send a little bit of info toward your guys' way. Um, a lot of the people that I have texted and talked to when I first started this, um, I had a lot of them in that that uh, didn't really get back to me. and But I came across this guy here. And backyard built trucks. 
And this guy, Nat, I tell you, he, he has done this several times. He's been doing it a lot. And I tell you, if you want info about putting a big block in an S10 or anything about an S10, this guy is very knowledgeable. So I highly recommend, Nat, that if you're looking for somebody that uh, can give you the info on this, this is the guy to talk to. Um, it, sometimes, Nat, it may take a day or so to, for him to get to you, but I guarantee you he will get back to you. And uh, that's what helped me, Nat, get me started on this. Um, get you, Nat, that this is not an overnight thing, so it's just a matter of uh, keep plucking away. But um, like I stated now that I was going to continue to do these videos until it was done. So that way, uh, one, for my reference, and two, and that to help others out that's wanting to do the same thing. Now, get you and that, a small block would have been a lot easier, probably a lot less of a hassle, a lot less of cutting. But who, uh, who wants to be the same as everybody else? I want something different. Big block was the way that I want to go. And uh, so uh, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a comment. Um, if you uh, please subscribe, uh, by all means, Nat. And when the next video comes up, um, you will get informed. Um, I am going to do a video of my shop heater here pretty soon, which is over here, of how I built it. To kind of give uh, a little bit of insight of um, trying to get something that would heat up your shop. And so I will be making that video. Um, you will find that there's probably about two or three other videos of this same type of stove. Um, but I will elaborate into everything that I had to do to build it the way it is. So um, that's the end of this part three. And happy S10. Keep them trucks rolling. And... Let's get them on the road. Thank you.